We're focused on removing a node from a binary search tree, and we're going to look at three different cases. This is case one. Um, so we're this is some subset, some subtree of our binary search tree. What we care about in this case is we find the node to be removed. Okay, so that part of the algorithm will be familiar. We've already written code to find a node. Um, so let's say the node to be removed is this node and the node to be removed is a leaf node. So that's what makes case one special. The node we're removing is a leaf node. This is the easiest to implement because if the node we find that needs to be removed has no children, then we can simply set its parents, that node's parent, left or right child, depending on if the node is the left or right child, to null, and we're done, right? We just get rid of it, that's it. Um, so this is the most straightforward case. If we get lucky, the node to be removed will be a leaf node. We update the parent to set the appropriate child to null. This does require that as we're finding this node, we keep track of who its parent is, right? There's nothing in a node that refers to its parent, so we're gonna need an additional variable to keep track of that as we're searching through the code. All right, so let's give that a shot. So here's our binary search tree class, and we're gonna scroll down a little bit to remove. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna write some code together. Um, the first part of the algorithm is, is to find the node we wanna remove. So this part I think will be most familiar. So I'm gonna create a local variable. I'm gonna call it to be removed, just to add a little bit of context because this method is gonna get kinda long, and I wanna remember what this variable means. So we're gonna start at the root, not that we're removing the root, but that we will update this local variable to be removed as we search through the tree until we actually find the node to be removed, and then we'll go from there. Um, as I mentioned, we need to keep track of the parent. So we're gonna initialize parent to null because the root has no parent. Um, so for now, we'll set parent to null. As we search through the tree, we'll update both to be removed and parent. Finally, um, I need like a sentinel variable um, to keep track of whether we found the, the node or not. Um, remember, big focus yesterday was our implementation of the binary search tree, we're actually seeing how the algorithms work within the tree set, right? And when it comes to a set, if we ask to remove an element from a set and that element's not in the set, it doesn't generate an error, it doesn't throw an exception, it just doesn't do anything. That's the behavior of a set, and we wanna make sure we support that behavior here in our remove method. All right, so first step is let's find the node. Um, so we'll write a, a while loop while we haven't found the node, and to be removed, the, like, the, the node we're traversing through is not equal to null, um, we're going to keep searching. We're checking both of these conditions because once we find the node, we want to stop searching for it. And, or rather, or um, if we don't find the node, to be removed will eventually be set to null, and that lets us know that the node to be removed isn't in this tree. Um, and so we'll just, we want to stop and, and give up at that point. All right, the code we're going to write now um, we're going to write at this point will be um, extremely familiar. We've written this twice before in terms of how we search a binary search tree. So I'm going to keep using that local variable diff for the difference between obj, which refers to the element to be removed. We're going to invoke the compare to method like we keep doing. And we're going to compare it to to be removed dot data. All right. So that's the same as before. If that difference is zero, woohoo, we found it. Found equals true. We are done with this part of the algorithm. Else, we need to keep searching. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm choosing to write a single else with inside of it. We're going to have another if else because there's some shared code between the case of we need to keep searching. And that shared code is we're about to change to be removed to either the left or right child. 
depending on the value of diff. Before we change the value of to be removed, we need to update parent to refer to to be removed. So we keep track of the parent. Now we can change to be removed to refer to either the left or right child. So if the difference is less than zero, if the element we're removing is less than the node we're currently at, we need to go left. To be removed equals to be removed dot left. Otherwise, we got to go right. To be removed equals to be removed dot right. While not exactly the same as the code that we've written uh, previously, it's very, very similar. We're still calling compare to. We're still looking at the that difference. We're still traversing left and right based on the difference or if we find the node stopping. Okay, so not exactly the same code, um, but very similar algorithm. All right, so at this point, we have either found the node or the node's not in the tree. So let's handle the, the case of the node's not in the tree. If not found, okay, if found is still false, just return. We're, we're done. We want to get out of here before we get to all the complicated stuff. All right. I'm going to add a comment here and say this is for case one. Okay. Um, let's refresh our memory about case one. Again, case one is when the node to be removed is a leaf node. It has no left child, it has no right child, and therefore we can just simply set the parent to null. Okay. So let's, let's code that. So case one would be true if to be removed dot left equals null and to be removed dot right equals null. Okay. If it's, which is a way of saying if it's a leaf node, right, both its children are null, then we just update the parent. We've got a couple different cases here. Um, there's, there's an edge case, which is it's possible that the node to be removed is the root of the tree. Um, in which case it has no parent, right? And so if we try to say like parent dot left equals null, like that's going to get an null pointer exception. So let's, let's handle that case. If parent equals null, this dot root equals null. Okay. All right, so that handles the special case. If that's not true, then we know that this node we're removing does have a parent. We just don't know if the node that we're removing is the left child or the right child. So that's what we need to figure out next. Else if parent dot left is equal to to be removed, then we know the node we're removing is the left child of its parent, and so we'll just say parent.left equals null. Else, yeah, else, um, we know that parent dot, we know that the node we're removing is the right child of its parent, and so we'll just say parent.right equals null. If we make it all the way through here, we are done. Okay. So I'm kind of writing this as like its own little chunk of code to handle case one. So once again, if it's a leaf node, handle the special case of if it has no parent, then we're removing the only node in the tree. So now the tree is empty. We set root to null. Otherwise, if it does have a parent, let's figure out if this node we're removing is the left child or the right child. 
and set the corresponding reference to null. So that's case one. Let's pause for a moment. Take a few seconds to think this through. See what questions you have before we look at case two. Case two is going to get a little more complicated. What questions do you have about case one? Well, if case one is too easy, let's look at case two. So here's case two. For case two, the node to be removed is not a leaf node, but it only has one child. Okay. This is actually pretty easy too, because if the node to be removed has only one child, then our solution is to update the parent to refer not to the node we want to remove, but rather refer to that node's single child. The reason why this works is in the binary search tree, the entire right subtree of a given node of the parent in this case, every node in the right subtree is greater than this parent node. So therefore, we know that if we update the parent to refer to the single child, that's still appropriate. That child is greater than the parent, or else it wouldn't be in the right subtree. Okay? And this works just as well for the left subtree, right? because every node in the left subtree, the entire left subtree, is less than the parent node. That's why it's in the left subtree. Um, so this, this approach, this algorithm can work both for left and right child, but the key difference here is that the node to be removed um, has a single child, not two children, just one child. Okay. So let's see what that case is going to look like from a code perspective. So I'm going to add another comment, case two. We're going to start with another if statement. We, we need to construct a conditional here that basically says the node to be removed has exactly one child, right? So the way we can do that is we can say to be removed dot left equals null or to be removed dot right equals null. Okay. If they're both null, that's case one. We're already handling that. If there's two children, this will be false. We're not going to enter this if statement. But in this case, if either the left is null or the right is null, then we know we have exactly one child. That matches the description of case two. For case two, we need an additional instance or additional local variable. We already have a variable that refers to the node to be removed. We already have a variable that refers to its parent, but we now need a variable that refers to its single child. So we're going to create a new variable called new child, because this will be the new child of the parent node, but that's a lot to type. So let's call it new child. And now we need to initialize this variable appropriately. We don't yet know if this new child is the left or right child of the node to be removed. So let's figure that out. That's not too hard. If to be removed dot left, e oops, dot left equals null, so if the node removing has no left child, then the new child, new child, must be its right child. Cool. That's not bad. Otherwise, we know there's a child, so the new child must be the left child. Okay. We wrote it as an if else, but this else really means else if to be removed dot right equals null, right? I mean, we know that's the only other possibility based on the condition up here at the start. All right, so at this point, we've identified the child. We just need to associate that child with the node to be removed's parent. 
we still have to handle the case that the node to be removed might not be, might not have a parent. It might be the root of the tree. It's not the only node in the tree in this case because it has a child, but it might be the root of the tree. So if parent equals null, we have to handle the special case and say this dot root doesn't equal null because there's still potentially a whole subtree there, but we want to say this dot root equals new child. Okay, That single child of the node to be removed becomes the root of the new tree. Otherwise, we need to assign the right child of the parent to the new child if the node to be removed is the right child. And similarly for the left case. So let's capture each of those two cases. So we'll say else if, if parent.left equals to be removed, parent.left will now equal the new child. Else, da, else, easy enough, we know parent.right must equal the new child. And if we pull all this off, we can return because we're done. Whew. Here's what I want you to do next. We're gonna pause for a few minutes. I want you and your partner, maybe you three can be a group and you two can be a group. I want you and your partner to look closely at the code we just wrote for case one and case two. And I want you to specifically discuss how is the code for case one and case two similar? How is it the same? And how is it different? Okay. I'm going to give you a, a minute or two to have that discussion, and then we'll share out our thoughts and decide where we head to next. What we're gonna do next, and what you've identified because of the similarities, is we're gonna do a technique called refactoring. Refactoring is when we rewrite our code without changing its functionality. This works, okay? We don't wanna change the functionality, we don't wanna break it, but we want to make this code more concise, easier to understand by combining case one and case two. Because if we, if we apply our computational thinking skill of abstraction, case one and case two, if we take a step back, are actually the same case. Okay? Because in both case one and case two, we're, assign, we're changing either the left or right child of the parent of the node to be removed to the node to be removed's child. It's just that in case one, the child is null. But it's still the same algorithm. So we can actually combine this, and we're going to change this comment for case two. We're going to call this case one and case two. And we're going to re read through this code again and see what's going to happen here. So if either the left is null or the right is null, which also means or both are null, okay? So if both are null, this will still be true. Then we're gonna look for the new child. Thanks. If there is no left child, we're gonna assign new child to the right. 
Now, what value will we assign to new child if the node we're removing is a leaf node? Yeah, this line of code is going to assign new child to null, which is exactly what we did in case one. Okay. Otherwise, if there is a left child, then we're going to assign new child to that left child. That's case two. The rest of this code will do exactly the same thing as we did in case one, because new child will either refer to a valid node or it will be null. So the code we just wrote for case two entirely covers case one without any changes. So I changed the comment here to be case one and case two, and I'm gonna delete case one. That's an example of refactoring. We made our code more concise. We made our code easier to understand. We did not change the functionality of it at all. Okay, very, very powerful technique. All right. Are we ready for case three? All right, here's case three. Oh, all right. For case three, The diagram is a little bit more complicated. We still find the node to be removed, but now the node to be removed has two children. So we can't take the simpler approach like we took in case two and update the node to be removed's parent to simply refer to either the left or right child because we have two children, okay? And we can't have like the right child can't refer to two different nodes. That's not gonna work. So here's the algorithm that we're gonna take. There, there's two different approaches we can take here. I'm going to ask you what the second is in a moment. We're going to focus on this one first. What we need to do is we need to find some node in this entire subtree that we can substitute for the node to be removed and the binary search tree will still be valid. Okay. The approach we're going to take is starting from the node to be removed. We're gonna look at the right subtree, which is all of this entire right subtree are all, the no are all nodes that are greater than the node to be removed. We're gonna search through the right subtree to find the smallest value in the right subtree. So that means we're gonna look at the right subtree and we're gonna go left and we're gonna go left and we're gonna go left until we can't go left anymore. The left child is null. And then we know that that node we're at is the smallest child in the right subtree. And if we were to take the smallest child in the right subtree and substitute it for the node to be removed, we know all the other nodes, nodes in this right subtree are greater than that smallest child. And we know that all the nodes in the left subtree are less than that smallest child. Okay. The, that's hard. The additional complication is the smallest child in the right subtree cannot have a left child, because if so, that child would be the smallest. Um, but it might have a right child. And if it does, we can't lose this child and this entire, potentially this entire subtree. So we need to make sure that the smallest child's parent, its left child becomes the smallest child's right child. You should be confused by now. This is ridiculous. Okay. To help cement this, I have a question that I want you to think about without talking to your neighbor first for like 30 seconds and then talk with your neighbor. And my question is, we... I just sh showed you how if we find the smallest child in the right subtree and substitute that for the node to be removed, the binary search tree is valid. My question for you, what I want you to think about is, this is not the only approach. What is another approach we can take to remove that handles this situation? So without talking, think about it on your own for like 30 seconds and then discuss with your neighbor what is another solution we could have?
All right, now talk. Try to figure out together another solution. There you go. What do we think? How else could we do this? Jack? Say that again? I'm sorry? This one? Or this one? This one. Okay. This, no this node? Yeah. Could be the root of... In this diagram, this has no children, but it could, right? There could be a whole subtree here. So that would get in our way in that case, right? Plus, this node is less than the root, right? So we, we can't, we would have to like rotate the tree almost, right? Which, that is an algorithm that we do with bi binary search trees, and that's, more complicated. That's like the red black extension we've got. So, Aiden, were you going to say something? Your hand was up. Sorry? Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's exactly what we could do. So we could, instead of finding the smallest child in the right subtree, we could find the greatest child in the left subtree because the greatest child in the left subtree is greater than all the other nodes in the left subtree. And if we substitute it up here, it will also though be less than all the nodes in the right subtree because it was in the left one. So it doesn't matter which approach we take, whether we get the smallest child in the right subtree or the greatest child in the left subtree, it's really the same algorithm. Question? Yeah, like in this picture, we would take this node and we'd put it here. And if this node had a child, um, it couldn't have a right child because then that child would be greater. But if this node had a left child, we would have to like clean that up and have this node reference that left child. All right, let's try to code this. All right, so case three, I'm going to actually clarify what case three is here in our notes because it, it is complicated. At, if we get to this point in the code, that means that neither subtree of the node to be removed is empty. That's what case three is. Like a lot of the code we write, the concept of the algorithm is more complicated than the code we have to write to capture it. Um, but we do have to do a couple of different steps. First step, we need to find the least element of the right subtree. I know on the slide I said smallest. I think I'm misusing the word small and least, right? There's try to be more precise with my vocabulary. So we're going to find the least element of the right subtree. And again, you could totally code this to find the greatest element of the left subtree. Same approach. All right, least element of the right subtree. So we need to keep track of, we need to find this least node. 
and we need to keep track of its parent. So I'm going to create a local variable called least parent. We're going to set that to be to to be removed because that's where we're starting. And we're going to create another variable called least and I'm going to set that to to be removed at right. So we're going to look at the right subtree of the node to be removed and we're going to keep updating these two variables until we find that least element. So at this moment, to make this concrete, least parent refers to the node to be removed and least refers to this node right here, okay, the right child. That's where we are. We're gonna write a while loop that continues to look left, left, left until there is no left child. So let's do that. while least.left is not equal to null, while this is true, that means there is still a node in the subtree that is less than the node we're at. So set least parent to be least, set least to be least.left. When this loop finishes, least will refer to the least element of the least node of the right subtree. We will have found it. And we will know its parent, which we need. So let's capture that, because there's a lot going on here. Least at this point in the code, least refers to the least child of the right subtree. We found it. All right, what's the next step? We found this node. We're gonna substitute it for the node to be removed. We could update this to refer to this node, change the right child to refer to this subtree, change the left child to refer to this. That's a lot of work. It would be easier to simply change the data instance variable of this node to be the data instance variable of this node. That's what we're going to do instead. Okay. So we're going to say to be removed. The node that's to be removed, we're not really going to remove. We're just going to change its data to least.data. That's how we substitute that one node with the node to be removed. Now we're not quite done. The data is up here, which is great. This tree is all valid, but this node is still here, right? So we still have to clean up this mess down here. We have to update the least node's parent to refer to the least node's right child. We still have to do this dash line link. That will actually remove this node with the duplicated data from our tree. There's two potential cases here. The parent of the least node could actually be the node to be removed. That could happen um, if, if there, this node here had no left child. Or we could be down in the subtree. So let's handle both cases. If least parent equals the node to be removed, in that case, least parent dot right equals least dot right. Else, we're somewhere down in the subtree, least parent dot left equals least dot right. Let's look at this visually like one more time. So our diagram is for this else case. The parent of that least node we're gonna change its left child to refer to the right child of the least node, okay? That's the else case. Imagine, however, that all of this, there is no left child of this node here. All of this doesn't exist. In that case, the least parent, we have to update the right child because it's the node to be removed. That's our special case. We have to update the right child to refer to the, this node's right child. So that's the if statement.
Whew. I think this is the hardest algorithm we write. It's this case three thing. Um, but at this point, we can go to Which tree? Ah, we can go to tree tester. Here is we create a binary search tree. We add a bunch of letters to it. We go and then this is a better test. We actually go through all the cases. We remove a leaf. We remove an element with one child. We remove an element two children. We remove the rent root. We print the whole thing out. So if I run this, we can actually see what we get. Oh, not quite. Oh, I forgot one thing. Uh, this might have to wait till later. Uh, we never implemented the print method. Oh, let's do it. We've got time. All right, this is really easy. Two lines of code. In our print method, we want to do. We want to print this dot root, and then we're just going to print a blank line. All right, I lied. It's more than a couple lines of code. Here's the print method. For recursive. All right, do check your win. I'm going to type the last thing here so we have it. I'll commit this to GitHub. You can get it from there as well. And we will actually look at this again um, tomorrow too, because it connects to the things we didn't get to today. But this will actually print out our tree um, in a special order, which will be the topic of 